there aren't a lot of moments when we have to come together as a community. And you could probably think of a lot of tragedies that have hit uh, our region or our country over the past uh, 10 or 20 years. And, but uh, certainly Hurricane Sandy is one of those moments where we all need to come together and look out for each other, look out for our neighbors, especially if they're senior citizens, look out for our, our neighbors who have young children, and, and make sure that uh, as we move through this cleanup and recovery effort that we are doing everything we possibly can to protect uh, our friends and neighbors and of course exercising good common sense for ourselves. Uh, today's update, uh, just to give you a little bit of an update on the storm uh, and uh, on what's happening with the recovery efforts, uh, the Con Ed outages have now moved down to 14,694. Uh, Con Ed has restored just over 6,000 customers. Uh, again, some residents who have never lost power during this recovery effort may lose power, uh, so they shouldn't be alarmed. And uh, sometimes it's necessary that that happens in order for uh, them to get the surrounding air up, up and running. Our DPW parks crews have cleared over 100 streets, and we're working around the clock. Uh, we continue to wait for Con Ed uh, on, on many instances. And, uh, and that's, uh, again, uh, something that's a little frustrating. Uh, I think the, the rest of the world has, has come to terms with the fact that we are in a new climate and, uh, and we have to be prepared for these things. And I think it's time for Con Ed to uh, join that world. Uh, I will tell you this, Assemblywoman Shelley Mayer, uh, who has been uh, working with me, has been holding daily conference calls with the rest of the state delegation and has been pushing Con Ed very, very hard. I want to thank her for her efforts. Um, the shelter is, uh, the shelter at the PAL is still open. There are uh, 32 people there, uh, all most, or actually every one of them is from uh, 10 Mooney Place. The building department is working with the owner right now to uh, get the building up to code so that uh, these families could be sent back home. Uh, so far we've had, uh, the, the number continues to rise, it's over three Point two million dollars in damages to uh, the city's infrastructure and we're still calculating. Um, we're going to be having cell phone, iPads, laptops, uh, whatever, batteries, whatever it is you need to charge. We're going to have those charging centers set up starting today through Sunday uh, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at all our Yonkers senior centers. That would be Scotty, Chima, Cola, Coin Park, and Nodine Hill Community Centers. Uh, it's also a place to get out of your house and get warm if you want to spend a day in one of those centers. Uh, certainly that would be uh, something you should do. Uh, dry ice, it continues to be available at Yonkers Raceway while supplies last. Uh, and residents can, can also go to uh, the IBM complex and purchase if, uh, if need be. Uh, there are, are still uh, seven schools uh, without power. I will ask the superintendent to uh, update us on schools uh, shortly. Um, remember to our residents, look out for those who uh, may want to price gouge. Remember to call the city at 377-3000 and report any instance. If it seems high, especially if it seems obscenely high, it probably is, make sure you call 377-3000 and uh, and let us know about it. Uh, the, <clears throat> the gas rationing is continuing. Uh, what we're being told is that the ports are being opened. It's going to provide for uh, that infusion of gas to come. I don't know how much of a bubble exists between when the, the ports and when the gas gets delivered and when it gets to us. Uh, we, do, we do know that, uh, remember, we live next door to the largest city in America. Uh, we also have New Jersey, which has been devastated, and uh, we, I mean, we had one gas station, was in Nepean Amia this morning, that uh, as soon as they got a delivery, 150 cabs out of New York showed up. So uh, it is uh, important that we continue the rationing so that all of the residents of our city uh, have the ability to at least get some type of gas so that they have some type of mobility. Um, for, uh, for our kids out there, remember, Many of us are going to open our doors tomorrow during the day for Halloween. Uh, I know that the, uh, the PTAs, the, uh, some of the uh, 
Children's Sports Associations have all been involved in this. Uh, so for, for the families out there who have power, who can participate, uh, it'd be nice to give our kids a little something to do. Uh, and I, I, again, come to my house. I'll uh, have a chocolate bar there for you. Except Chuck can't come. Because yeah. so, <laughs> you'll want all, he'll, he'll take the box. Yeah. <laughs> um, with that, I'd like to ask our superintendent of schools, Bernard Prazio, to update us on the schools. Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's been a tough week, and I just want to commend the mayor and all the sports staff, fire department, police department, department of public works, the facilities department at the Board of Ed for working and going the extra mile. I know that we all appreciate it, especially in terms of getting our schools up and running. At this point in time, we still have seven buildings without power. I'm going to um, indicate those schools at this point in time. It's Padilla School 15, Scholastic Academy School 18, School 21, 25, Museum 25. We have the Pulaski School, School 30 on Nevada, and Yonkers Middle High School. Those are the seven without power at this time. Our biggest concern was making sure that our buses would be able to provide transportation for our students. At this point, point in time, we've spoken to all our bus companies. They are fueled and ready to transport students as early as Monday morning. We are looking toward opening schools on Monday morning and it would follow through with a full day of school on Tuesday. Our original calendar called for students to be off and staff to be in on Tuesday, but we're looking uh, for an immediate makeup day on Tuesday. We've discussed this with the Board of Elections because we do have a huge election coming up. So we will have school on Monday and Tuesday. The final call to all of our parents will be going out Sunday evening, ensuring you that it is safe, to transport our students on the roads. Our only concern at this point in time is that the roads are open where our students uh, basically travel. So at this point in time, we're looking that we will be uh, opening our buildings, our schools, the 31 schools that are available to be open on Monday morning. Unfortunately, those seven schools, if we are not powered up, those students will remain home. Staff will be redeployed throughout the district but we need to start normalcy once again and get our city up and running. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm. I completely agree, and thank you uh, to Mr. Superintendent, who uh, has been doing a great job. He and his staff have uh, uh, really worked through this, and they were able to get uh, working, obviously, with the rest of the team here to get our public library and Board of Education main building here in the waterfront uh, up and running um, with the uh, with, uh, in a, in a pretty quick manner. Uh, I'd like to ask Commissioner Meyer to uh, give us an update. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yesterday, <clears throat> I spoke briefly about how the, the NIMS and the incident command system works. Let me talk a little bit about how we operate within that system. Um, we're still getting a lot of complaints that things may be a little too slow. We have to, we must work at the pace that Con Ed is working. We cannot be cutting down trees that are charged with electricity because wires are lying on them, and we do not have qualified linesmen that work for the city of Yonkers. They're, they're actually um, environmental maintenance workers. We've given them additional equipment and tools like chainsaws um, to go out there and cut the trees that are safe to cut. These are trees that have no wires attached to them, nothing covering them, no electricity on them. Once Con Ed deems it's a safe operation, we can then go in and start cutting up the trees. As the mayor said, we had 170 trees down that were involved with wires, and we've cleared over 100 of them. Uh, that is the pace that we can work at. We anticipate, Mr. Mayor, that um, we'll be able to clear a lot more of these up uh, by Sunday so that superintendent could get kids on the buses and the buses can get to the schools. It does take some time. We ask everyone to be patient. We know that these lines are causing outages. Now with that said, just because you see a Con Ed crew come out and clear a tree, a DPW crew come out and cut the tree, does not mean your lights come back on. That is the clearing operation. Now Con Ed crews have to come out. They have the restoring operation. The restoring operation is being controlled by Con Ed headquarters. 
not by the emergency operations center here. That's how they run things. We have no idea how many crews are out there restoring power. As the mayor said, 6,000 residents have been restored. That's a good number. We started at 21,000, now we're at 14,000. We anticipate it at this rate, by the end of the weekend, hopefully, uh, a good number of our residents will, will be back with power. So just need to understand how that operation goes. Uh, remember, uh, the new Halloween date is tomorrow. There are still down wires. Just got a report an hour ago. Wires that were down for the last couple of days and they just started sparking. If you see wires that are sparking, if you see trees that are down with wires, please use all the caution that you can. And get. don't go around the tree, don't step over the tree. Turn around, go back the way you came and find another way to, uh, to access your house or, or the neighborhood. Uh, we are expecting the temperature to drop. We have the capability of opening up more shelters. We have the PAO center open as a shelter right now. We can open more shelters. Uh, if you are out of power and you would like to go to a shelter, please call the mayor's helpline, 377-HELP, and we will make those arrangements. It will get cold. You know you have no electricity. You know you may not have heat. Call us now so that we can open up those shelters rather than 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Not that we won't open them, we will, but let's kind of look ahead. If we need to open up the shelters, the mayor will open them up, open them up as soon as possible. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner <clears throat> Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, although we've been making progress, we have been removing trees and wires. Uh, there still are difficult road conditions. We still have approximately uh, 17 street lights that are out and, and trees down and wires down. So again, we're asking the members of the public to please use caution when traveling on our roadways. Uh, additionally, we've been experiencing long lines at gas stations throughout the city. It's kind of a fluid situation as certain gas stations um, use up their supplies. Another one would get a, get a shipment and we have shifting traffic conditions at, at numerous locations throughout the city. So please, we're asking uh, drivers to be patient, try not to block the intersections or the roadways as well as the driveways to these sites because we're trying to keep traffic moving, especially to have uh, moving traffic for emergency vehicles. Um, again, lastly, we're going to remind residents that if, if an emergency or service personnel asks to have access to your property, uh, you should ask for identification to ensure that they are legitimate. Uh, they should have photo ID and be wearing a uniform. Uh, if any member of the public feels that something is suspicious or they have any difficulty, give us a call at our non-emergency number, which is 377-7900. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Sweeney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to report from the Yonkers Fire Department. Our call volume has gone down to uh, normal levels as we experienced uh, prior to the storm. Uh, I just want to touch base on a few fire safety issues uh, with the gasoline shortage going on out there and people experiencing issues with either fueling up their vehicles and or they're refueling their generators out there. There's going to be more and more transportation of gasoline in, the, in uh, gasoline storage cans there. I'd ask that if you do transport gasoline in the, in the storage cans, you use approved cans. There would be wording on the side of the, uh, of the can itself or the container. It would be approved container. Please use them at all possible. They are the most safest containers out there. And if you do store it, in your, in, if you do have those cans or storage available, please do not store them inside your house out there. The vapors can get out of there. They can combust or they can cause uh, hazards down the road. And also, yes, I spoke about uh, using other devices to heat the households with the colder weather coming in there. We stress try to use a UL approved device. If you are using another device such as a UL approved device, please use it in an open area of your, of your residence like the living room or something. Do not use it in a closed room such as a bedroom or a den or, or a smaller room out there. And also if you can, please try and turn it off before you go to bed to make sure everybody's safe. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. And I'd also uh, just want to recognize that the entire city council is here and continues to be here working with us uh, uh, on a daily basis. And I'd like to ask uh, the majority leader of the Yonkers City Council, Wilson Toretto, to come up. Uh, I'm sorry, we seem to be challenging him more and more to translate. This is probably the longest one he's had to translate, but uh, he hasn't failed us yet. So, Councilman Torero. 
Gracias, señor alcalde. Y este, eh, primeramente, el alcalde abrió su, su tema esta, esta tarde para indicarle a nuestra comunidad de que tienen que mantenerse unidas. Además de mantenerse unidos, deben, por favor, de ayudar a sus vecinos, aquellos vecinos, por ejemplo, los envejecientes y los niños. Las temperaturas van a, estar a, van a empezar a, a bajar, se van a poner un poquito más frío. Aquellas personas que no tienen electricidad, que por favor tengan paciencia. Vamos a tratar de tener mucha paciencia. La unidad nos va a ayudar a pasar por esta etapa tan difícil que es una de las etapas que jamás se ha visto aquí en la, en la historia de nuestra ciudad. Así que paciencia, por favor, para que así podamos salir de esta situación lo mejor brevedad posible y de la mejor forma posible ayudándonos unos a los otros. La policía indica que por favor tengan paciencia y que otra vez no traten de, de, de desobedecer las, las, las barricas que tienen en las calles, que por favor no la defiendan, no se metan en esos lugares en donde tenemos árboles que se han caído y tenemos extensiones eléctricas todavía en las calles. Aunque ustedes puedan ver, como dijo el Departamento de Trabajo, que hay calles que están limpias, aún así se han, se han limpiado los árboles, pero eso no indica que no hay peligro. O sea, porque se han limpiado los árboles no significa que no hay peligro. Todavía los cables eléctricos están ahí. Y necesitamos la ayuda de Con Edison para que pueda traernos la electricidad nuevamente. Así que tengan mucho cuidado que eso no significa que las calles están disponibles para cruzar. El, el Departamento de, 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 de Bomberos le indica nuevamente que tengan mucho cuidado con el tipo de, de aparato que usan en sus casas, especialmente si es calentadores o si son eh, eh, otro tipo de, de, de aparatos que ustedes puedan usar para mantener eh, la, la, las y no, la nevera encendida o para tener los radios encendidos o ese tipo de cosas. Así que tengan mucho cuidado, por favor, porque eso puede causar fuego, eh, aún así, eh, para, para tratar de calmar la situación y ustedes puedan tener una mejor vida y puedan seguir eh, eh, caminando hacia sus casas y cuidando a sus hijos. También indican que tengan mucha paciencia en lo que se refiere al, al tráfico en, eh, que ustedes pueden ver en las calles con relación a las gasolineras. Hay muchas gasolineras que no tienen gasolina, así que tengan paciencia también en esas líneas y traten de no bloquear eh, las, las entradas de otros vehículos y de otros accesos que tienen a algunas personas. Por favor, tengan paciencia. Eh, entendemos que hay muchas gasolineras que, sean, que no tienen gasolina aquí en la ciudad de Yonkers y necesitamos eh, eh, más gasolina. Eh, el alcalde indica que van a traer más, más gasolina a la ciudad para que las gasolineras puedan servir a la ciudad de Yonkers. Tenemos que asegurarnos que, por favor, eh, me dale o vender la gasolina a las residentes de Yonkers que necesitamos movilidad dentro de la ciudad. Están viniendo otras personas de otras, de otras ciudades a, a quitarnos la gasolina nuestra. Así que, por favor, eh, paciencia allá afuera. Eh, vamos a ayudar, a ayudar a nuestros residentes primero y luego a otros residentes que tengan otras necesidades que vengan de fuera. Así que, eh, nuevamente, paciencia. Tenemos las ayudas de, de teléfonos, el 377-HELP, 377-HELP, para que puedan llamar a la ciudad. Tenemos el 377, eh, el 377-3000, también para si quieren llamar, eh, a, a las ayudas para que entiendan también que ahí afuera está eh, el departamento de edificios chequeando que ustedes no estén cruzando líneas uh, eléctricas uh, de una casa a otra, que por favor no lo hagan y si piensan hacer algunos cambios para tener electricidad y tener calentamiento, uh, traten de eh, traer una persona que tenga licencia, licencia y que sepa hacer el trabajo. Tenemos que evitar eh, algún fuego, tenemos que evitar que algunas personas se electrocute eh, tenemos que evitar y proteger a nuestros niños y a los envejecientes. Nuevamente, tenemos otros lugares en los que se van a abrir más lugares para que las personas puedan ir. A, a, si necesitan ayuda para dormir a, o quieren recrearse, a, tenemos otros shelters abiertos, otros lugares para dormir. Y también para, si ustedes quieren cargar sus, a, sus celulares, también si quieren a, cargar sus, a, la batería de sus computadoras a, para mantenerse en contacto con nosotros. Así que vamos a tener esos lugares abiertos como es... Eh, la escuela eh, Lincoln va a estar abierta. Vamos a tener todos los lugares donde se, se, se juntan los seniors o los envejecientes. Los vamos a tener abiertos para acceso de ustedes. Así que tenemos algunos lugares en Riverdale, tenemos otros lugares en Ashrington, tenemos lugares en, en Notting Hill, en la parte alta. Así que pueden usar esos lugares. Están abiertos ahora mismo para su uh, uso. Uh, no dejen de usarlo. Por favor, si quieren mantenerse caliente, esos lugares van a tener, le van a ofrecer esas necesidades a ustedes. Por favor, paciencia, cuidado. Nosotros vamos a continuar haciendo nuestro trabajo de, de, desde aquí adentro para asegurarnos de que ustedes tengan una mejor vida. Gracias.
Thank you, Wilson. Now, just one other quick note before we end uh, is that the, the call center is receiving, a, um, you know, obviously a lot of calls every day. Um, it's very, very clear to me that there's a, a certain level of frustration out there. And I guess as, as a city, we'd rather deal with frustration than devastation. But the frustration is there. And, and I think we just need to remind everyone this will continue to be an operation that's going to take probably, probably well into next week before we see restorations or cleanup, uh, where we see a total restoration and total cleanup. But know that your crews, uh, your city workforce is out there 24 hours a day, uh, clearing streets every day, cutting debris away every day, protecting us, our police, our fire, uh, and, and our, uh, the entire team is out there working and doing what they need to do. So uh, again, try to, be, try to be patient with this. This, is a, this was a, an incredible storm. Uh, our issues are not nearly as serious as, the, as the New Jersey and obviously what has happened in New York City and on Long Island, but, 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 it is, but there is a certain amount of frustration out there. And I just ask that our residents try to be patient. I know it's like to shave in the dark. I've been doing that for the past three days now. Uh, so I share your frustration, and, uh, and, but we're going to get through this and move forward. Great. Thank you.